Okay, so I've uh, thrown a little paint on him as well. Um, as you can see, uh, done my uh, reshaping of the legs, and uh, it's probably a little bit more difficult for you to see in this color. Um, I've also um, put in uh, creases where the flesh has been creased. Let's see if I can scale in on that a little bit to be able to show you. So you can see them here and here and also back in here. All right. And uh, let's see, what else can I tell you about this animal so far? Um, it's pretty much what I've been up to. Uh, this need to be reshaped in here quite a bit. Uh, but as you can see now it's it's uh, stretching uh, as it should as the other side is squashing. Squash and stretch. And I've gone in here and fixed this up just a little bit. Um, Alright, so the way that I'm painting this animal is uh, just simply with the tools here in um, ZBrush. I'm going to come right down here. Uh, we've covered this in another tutorial as well, so I won't get too deep into this. Uh, poly paint, depress the colorize button, and then you can come right over here to your palette and simply start painting. And uh, what I like to do uh, to start with is pick a base color that is the overall general color of my animal. And for this quick demonstration, I'll just go ahead and yeah, maybe make it a little gray. I'm just get a broad brush here, lots of intensity. Oops, and we're going to be using the RGB intensity. Take Z add off. You're in draw mode. And go ahead and wash over your character with your base coat. Uh, just for grins, let's go ahead and pick something really shiny. Don't crash, don't crash. Alright. So, once we have base coat in there, then we can come back in and uh, grab another color, change our brush size and our intensity, take that way back, and begin to throw in some tone on tone. Do a sort of a dapple animal here. Just throw in that. And I tend to um, be really cautious um, on a sculpture like this, as you're working, you get a feel for what are the best poses uh, that are going to come out of this animal. And so um, when you, such as this one, I like this pose, it's straight on, but I also like poses that come in these directions. So I'm going to be careful not to paint my dark tones uh, in areas where it's going to conflict with my shadows. Uh, I don't want to paint out details, such as if I drop a, a dark tone in here, I've just visually destroyed all of the uh, model detail that I put in there. So I want to make sure that I don't do that. Um, you spend a good time good deal of time modeling your character and you want to make sure that those features are showing up very well. Now let me take this back, give myself a little bit, touch on these areas a little bit. 
right under those shadow areas to accentuate them just slightly. And that didn't not so good there. If I touch on those, then uh, sometimes that also really plays up the shape of the animal. And you can do and undo those um, to make sure that that is indeed doing what you want it to do. Okay, that one is okay. Deepen that area a little bit. As I work over this bottle, I can uh, see areas that, that still need to be touched up. I really didn't do a good job uh, making sure this model was complete. But I will have time to go back and finish that. Hopefully. Alright, so I'm getting some nice platinum shadows on this on this uh, animal. Bring this down the face and over the eyes. Across this area. Now, because this is such a strong feature in the animal, it does stick out quite a bit. I am going to spray across that just a little bit to tone that down. And I'll put eyes in him later, but for now I'm going to dial this down and go ahead and darken that up in there. Than that, I think. All right, so we have our platinum pony, and I may change the color of him again, but for now, I think you get the idea. And uh, from this point, I want to go ahead and leave the tail, as I'll be doing, eventually be doing uh, the um, hair fur tutorials and uh, we want something to work with, so I'll use this critter. Um, but from this, what I can do is build a platform for it if you're going to print it out on the 3D printer. And you'll need one contiguous mesh to be able to do that. Um, so your objects will need to be attached, uh, unless you don't want them attached but I would recommend for the sculpture that you would attach it to a base of some sort and uh, that way when it comes out it'll be able to stand up but sometimes uh, sculptures don't stand up without a base on them Oops, down and down. So 
like a little crumb on my ponies. So I'll give them a little white foot here. Right. And there he is. Alright, so this is the paint job that I've settled on. Uh, he reminds me of a pony I used to know, <laughs> Morgan. Very high-spirited animals. So, um, I'll go forward with this. What I'm going to do for my portfolio is take this into Photoshop, do a couple renders, go into Photoshop and uh, give it a background and some nice flowing hair. Uh, and uh, probably come back in here and give it a base before I print it on the 3D printer. So I hope that this tutorial has helped you uh, put together your, um, your organic model for your portfolio. Okay, so for those of you who would like to know how I uh, do my Photoshop, what I'm doing is a simple render of, of the horse. And I've come in here and I'm going to select the areas in the background. And since it's a low resolution uh, render, I'm just going to feather it just a little bit, delete those. And now I'm going to um, invert my selection and come right up here to image mode, excuse me, adjustments. Um, brightness and contrast, and I'm just going to take the brightness down, the contrast up, and give myself a nice shadow. Then from this point, what I can do is um, do a drop shadow. And I'm just going to come up here, selection, right click, the free transform. And I'm going to bring it down, and I'm going to skew that off in one direction, and maybe scale it some more, skew, alright, until I get something that looks like the one I had on here. Oop. Just gonna bring up the one that I had. All right, and once I have that, what I had done on an additional layer is to come in here. And I don't know if you can see it that small, but I uh, selected my gray, and um, then I uh, came in here with the radial selection up here on the gradient tool selected the gradient tool, and then uh, created a radial mask. So it's just enough to give it that glow in the middle, the circular glow, and also enough to take out, and you can see the um, shadow from underneath there. And I made the shadow about the same tone as the, the gray out here. All right, and then once I had that, I went ahead and smeared on some color for the tail and again up here for the mane and uh, composited it all together to look like the way that he does now. Alright, so that's it. That's the tutorial for creating a, a nicer looking image for your portfolio of your models from ZBrush so you don't have to try to export those out, rig them with bones, position them, and still not have them look as nice as they do in ZBrush because they're lower resolution. Because we can't uh, load in all of that resolution. So I hope this helps and your portfolios look awesome.